Hey guys, welcome back. Halo Infinite's newest update has just arrived and this one is pretty different. We've not had an update like this at all in the game's history. So, let's talk about it. Real quick, apologies, but I won't be turning the camera on today because I have a, uh, a medical issue of sorts. Don't worry, I'm, at least I think I'm okay. I hope I'm okay, but I'm just gonna skip the camera for this one. Hopefully you don't miss me too much. You'll see my face in the next video, which dear God almighty is gonna be the Halo TV show. Anyway, let's get on with the update. But before we jump into the actual content of this update, we need to talk about what this update symbolizes. So, big marketable infinite seasons are officially no more. They've instead been replaced by these smaller, more frequent, yet more low-key operations. In tandem with this change, Sketch confirmed on the stream the other week that Infinite has a team working on it, but additional teams are working on brand new projects that they're growing, exciting things for the future. Now, projects plural, not just one, multiple. I'm telling you right now, we're going to get a new game announcement this year. I honestly have never been more adamant about anything in my life. My Halo senses are tingling. I really feel like this is the year that we start to see what comes beyond Infinite. Honestly, I can't wait to move past Infinite to something new and hopefully campaign single player related. I'm so burnt out on Halo's multiplayer only focus that Infinite's had for well over a year at this point, basically since launch, to be quite honest with you. I'm really burnt out on it. I want something that's not Halo multiplayer for once, and I'm really hoping the shift in resources is going to yield that. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, which hopefully, fingers crossed, is going to be pretty soon. But for now, we've got to talk about Halo Infinite's latest big update, titled CU29. So first off, <laughs> let's talk about this update's name real quick. CU29, Content Update 29. Now on paper, I like the idea of the shift away from seasons where content can be delivered when it's ready instead of just being held back for some arbitrary release date. But that doesn't mean that we have to start giving major updates names that have no theming and that sound like something that you find in the game files. Why this update wasn't just called Spirit of Fire or I don't know, something like that is a frankly just peculiar. I mean, CU29 is confusing and utterly meaningless to anybody who's not in the Halo community. And to be honest, even if you're in the Halo community, this update name means very, very little. I don't really know how you can market CU29. You can definitely market Spirit of Fire. You can't market CU29. So from now on, can we please not call these updates by their names that you would find on a whiteboard in the studio and instead give them actual proper names with theming? I get the smaller updates, but theming goes a long way and calling an update is CU29. I don't know. It's a very strange thing to have to critique, but... I guess I need to. So when you boot up Infinite with this new update, one of the first things that you're going to see is the new main menu screen and also later on new loading screen backgrounds. And I gotta say, these look absolutely fantastic. Hands down the best ones that Infinite's had so far. And honestly, I would say the best that Halo's had since probably Reach, if not further back than that. The background of Zeta Halo kind of has that almost staple halo blue tint to it. And I love how the ring is always present in the background, regardless of the menu you're in, but it just is visible at different angles. I do really wish that these screens weren't just like images, they were actually animated. If these were animated, man, these would be absolute like top four, top five contenders for the best menu backgrounds in the entire franchise. But to be honest, I'm just happy that we've got a new background that comes with that kind of bluish tint that all the old Halo backgrounds used to have. Talking so much about this blue tint probably sounds like such a minor thing that I'm diving way too deep into, but that blue tint was just one of the things that many of us loved about classic Halo's menus. It almost made them feel kind of angelic in a way, and seeing a menu with that blue tint just instantly reminds me of happier times. That blue tint, I associate with good times, and these menus honestly do kind of invoke that feeling. So major props to uh, Pixel Flare, Ben Morrow, and anyone else who worked on these at 343. These menu backgrounds are incredible. But onto the biggest chunk of meat in this update, the legendary, iconic Mark IV armor. Now, the default Mark IV armor and almost all of the other armor, armor attachments, and everything else that you can add to Mark IV in this game look absolutely 
gorgeous. This is hands down the best that Mark IV has ever looked. Like, it doesn't even come close to be honest with you. And almost all of the new pieces that they've added to Mark IV fit the established Mark IV aesthetic so damn well. I love the antennas, the eye attachments, and all the little bits that stick off the armor on some of the shoulders and the chest pieces. And then Omega Team's armor from Halo Wars 2 in particular just looks so, so, so damn good. Honestly, I cannot put into words how hard 343 have nailed the Mark IV aesthetic here. Moving forward with Halo, can we please stop focusing on garbage aesthetics like Chimera? I mean, seriously, this thing looks atrocious. And can we please instead focus the attention that would have gone on stuff like Chimera on stuff like this instead? This is absolutely stunning. And honestly, mixing and matching Mark IV with other helmets and shoulders from other cores is even better. Like, honestly, like a customization dream come true. Mark V on Mark IV? Feels like I'm staring into an alternate timeline that's equally as beautiful as the one that we're in. Reach helmets on Mark IV just look so damn good. Mark VII on Mark IV just looks so right. Honestly, I'm addicted right now to just playing around with the Mark IV and creating cool Spartans with its core. It, it just looks so quintessentially Halo, and yet we've never had it in a game this customizable. I honestly can't give enough props for the designs of these armor pieces flat out perfect flat out perfect that said there is a major problem with mark IV, and unfortunately it's one that we're all too familiar with but we're gonna get to that in a minute because there's more stuff that we have to cover first that unfortunately is also part of this major problem so let's continue on the topic of mixing and matching, 343 have finally added cross-core shoulders. Now, as I said with cross-core helmets, and as I will continue to say, with any further cross-core that they do, I'm giving them no fanfare or praise whatsoever for this. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not. Like, mixing and matching shoulders is something that I can't believe we even had to ask for. It should have been there day one, and there's not a single excuse in the book that is gonna make me believe otherwise. The only reason they were core locked at the start was to get you to buy shoulders in the store for specific cores instead of using shoulders that you already had and that you already liked. So is it good that it's finally here over two years later? Absolutely, but I'm not gonna sit here and treat it like it's the return of playable elites or anything like that. Please. Can we just make sure that the next game ditches cores altogether? Or if it has cores, just have everything be cross-core compatible from the get-go. Build every piece of armor with cross-core in mind. Again, I shouldn't have to ask for that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Kabish, Kabish. So let's move over to the new weapon models. And starting off, we have one of my favorite Halo weapons of all time that has never been in an FPS game before and has only been in one game besides Infinite Halo Wars 2. The Stanchion Sniper Rifle. This thing is gorgeous. I mean, honestly, it feels kind of surreal that I finally get to see this thing in my hands in an FPS game. Like, literally, ever since reading the intro to Contact Harvest, where Johnson snipes that innie on the side of a Hornet through a construction site in a diner with one, I've wanted to use it. I've wanted it in a game ever since that. Halo Wars 2 was a little bit of a tease because I could kind of use it, but now that I can at the very least wield it, it's so cool. And I think it looks pretty damn good to be honest with you. Then there's the MA5B, or it's not actually the MA5B, it's called the Evolved MA5 in this game. And also, I think it looks pretty damn good. Um, it looks okay in first person, but it looks really, really good in third person. Personally, I cannot stand Reacher's assault rifle design, and so I also really don't like Infinite's assault rifle design either. I think that this MA5 looks a billion times better. I just vastly prefer the silhouette of the MA5 series to the MA37 or MA40. Honestly, my dream for the next Halo game is for them to just pretend like anything past the MA5B never existed, and to just go back to having that be the assault rifle complete with 60 rounds in the mag and complete with that incredible bullet hose sound from Halo 1, but I'm probably dreaming there. I'm probably dreaming. Either way, this model does look pretty damn good. But then there's this new weapon model for the DMR that you get by buying one of the HCS packs and... Oh, dear God, this thing looks atrocious. I'm sorry, this is just some, like, generic-ass live service-looking cosmetic. Like, it, it doesn't look one bit like it belongs in a Halo game. There's not a single drop of Halo's aesthetic in this model whatsoever, besides the base DMR, of course. And, you know, when you go from looking at the Stanchion and the MA5B to this abomination, it, it just... 
it looks even worse. It, it just has that kind of like generic soulless live service aesthetic. It's the kind of thing I, I can imagine a weapon looking like this in Apex or Warzone or God knows how many other gimmicky live service games that have their aesthetics watered down by microtransactions. So in the future, can we please get more stuff like the Stanchion and the Evolved M5? and nothing else like this. I just, I really don't like it. However, despite the stanchion and the MA5 weapon models looking really, really good, I've got to say, I really don't like this weapon model system. I, I, I just don't. This is pushing me over the edge with it. I really hate the cool, awesome, like fan beloved weapons like the MA5B and the stanchion aren't returning as actual weapons, but just as microtransactions that are cosmetic only and entirely meaningless to be honest with you. It's even worse when you consider that Infinite hasn't gotten a proper new weapon that isn't a DMR in, well, ever. It literally hasn't. The only two new weapons this game's gotten is DMR and DMR with scope. The stanchion in particular should have absolutely been its own weapon. I mean, dude, it's a gore sniper rifle. How the hell do you add that as just some silly microtransaction and not as a fully functioning monster of a rifle? Could you imagine how fun that would have been to use? A railgun and a sniper crossed over that has like an anti-vehicle focus, man. I mean, the same goes for the MA5B as well. It's so lame that this thing is just a skin and not some 60 round handheld bullet hose that sounds like pure 762 NATO bliss. I just, I really don't like these things only being weapon models and not having their own identity because when you make iconic weapons like this, just weapon models and not their own actual weapons, they do lack identity because they have to remain a certain size and shape so that the base weapons animations and sound effects and visual effects etc still line up with them because at the end of the day the stanchion is just a sniper, the MA5B is just an MA40. They can't have custom sound effects or animations or anything like that because they have to sync up with the base model of the weapon. I really hope that this weapon model system is like either entirely reworked or just scrapped for the next game to be honest with you because it's really really restrictive and it's done purely for the sake of profit. I, I just I don't understand how you could ever want a stanchion as a weapon model over an actual weapon. It would have been such a good addition but oh well maybe next time. Right then, let's talk about the Battle Pass and also future Battle Passes that are coming with this operation or in, in operations that are releasing soon. It's kind of a weird way of doing it. Um, the Spirit of Fire Battle Pass, or Operations Pass rather, that we have now, uh, I'm going to be honest, is not good at all. And if this is how the Operation Passes are going to be, then, well, it's really going to suck. I'm going to be honest. It's 20 tiers long with barely any armor in it at all, and yet it's still packed with tons of nonsense filler content. So let's run the numbers real quick. In the Free Spirit of Fire Operations Pass, you can unlock one helmet, one helmet attachment, two shoulders, one chest, one set of knee armor, and one utility. So basically roundabouts one full set of Mark IV. Meanwhile, in the store, there are seven entire sets of Mark IV armor locked behind a paywall. That's seven helmets, seven helmet attachments, 14 shoulders, seven chests, five knees, five wrists, and seven utilities. So out of the current 59 total pieces of non-default Mark IV armor, only 11% of them are unlockable via gameplay. 89% of them are locked behind the store with a total cost, by the way, of 12,800 credits, equal to roughly 96 pounds or $121. I, I honestly, I can't believe the store in this game only ever gets worse. It genuinely blows my mind. It's staggeringly expensive and just frankly greedy. There's almost nothing you can get for free in this. Like, Mark IV is just a shop core. And what annoys me most about all of this is how hard 343 have nailed the aesthetic of this game. Of course, there are exceptions. Like I said earlier, Chimera looks absolutely atrocious, but for the most part, the armor in this game is stellar. And Mark IV, man, it's, it's just the cherry on top. The artist that worked on it absolutely nailed it. It just, it looks perfect. The best it's ever looked. But for myself, and likely many others, it's just ruined by the fact that it's locked behind a hard paywall and almost none of it is unlockable by, you know, actually playing the game. I really feel like I'm a broken record at this point, but 
Honestly, I'm going to keep saying it until 343 actually decide to listen. A huge part of what made Halo's armor customization so special was the journey that you underwent to unlock the armor. How you unlocked the final achievement to get Katana in Halo 3. How you saved up all your credits and grinded to unlock inclement weather in Reach. How you spent a week doing nothing but assassinating people to unlock Venator in Halo 4. The second you lock a piece of armor behind a paywall, it doesn't matter how good it looks or how iconic it looks, a huge chunk of its soul is just destroyed and it becomes significantly less special as a result. I truly hope the next game is devoid of this garbage because honestly, Infinite monetization has put a massive dent in my personal enjoyment of the game and to be honest, being quite frank, customization and unlocking stuff is always my favorite part of Halo multiplayer or like top three favorite parts and how it's handled in Infinite has kind of ruined the multiplayer for me to be quite honest with you. Anyways, back to the battle passes. Uh, there are two more operations passes that are being released before kind of what season seven was meant to be releases. Cyber Showdown 3 and Yappening 2. And I'm gonna be honest, I, I really don't have any interest in either of these. Um, I already wasn't that interested when they announced them. And then when the battle passes were date mined, I just, I got even less interested. Just more battle passes or operations passes full of filler. Um, and the stuff that isn't filler still doesn't really float my boat personally, but you know, each of their own if you like them then. Godspeed. But to end this section on a slightly better note, one of the probably three good things about the Halo TV show has finally arrived in Halo Infinite. It's helmets. Now, I'm not the most keen on Vanak's like pipeless EOD helmet, but man, Riz and Kai's helmets look absurdly good and they, they fit the Mark IV, the Mark V and the Mark VII aesthetic like a goddamn glove. Seriously, props to whoever designed these helmets at Paramount or uh, Amblin or 343 or whatever. These helmets are just exceptional. To say that they were made for a show that was going out of its way to be nothing like Halo, they look exceptionally Halo and I love the fact that we can finally use them in game. Okay, let's move on to the one new map that was added in this update, Illusion. And I gotta say, I really like this map. So, V43's design philosophy with this map was to make one that felt like a modern Combat Evolved map, and I gotta say, it really does feel like a modern Combat Evolved map, particularly when it comes to its overall layout and its also kind of gimmick feature. So, the cool gimmick of this map is that there's a camo hallway in the middle of the map, right, if you stand in it, it's like a camo volume and you're just camoed by default, and then there's also man cannons that go through windows above the camo hallway, and these two things together really do combine to make this map feel like a kind of bungee era casual Halo map. Not one that's built to be hyper competitive and hyper refined, but rather one that's designed around like a central quirk that the rest of the map flows around. It really invokes longest and elongation vibes from Halo 1 and Halo 2. It really does feel like an evolution of those two maps hyper unique design philosophies with their long, narrow and vertical corridors. The camera hallway is like insanely fun to mess around in and hiding in events or losing pursuers behind the cover in there is, is really satisfying and it's a kind of gameplay that no other map in the game has and honestly, come to think of it, really no other map in Halo has ever had gameplay like this with a power up volume. It's a really cool idea that I kind of can't believe Halo's never done before. Yeah, we had the low gravity volumes on some of the Reach maps, but we've never had power up volumes before and I think it's really cool. I hope this is an idea that 343 continue to experiment with in the future because it works really well. But I gotta say, the cherry on top of this camo hallway for me is that the doors that go to it have Chiron-esque warning stripes on the walls. Yes, this is such a minor insignificant feature, but I'm a Chiron fanboy and I love seeing little references to that map in this map. Great. As for the map's theming, I mean, bringing the classic Combat Evolved camo and overshield back and basing an entire map around them is so, so cool. That is such a good idea for a setting of a map. I love it. Also, slight tangent, but can we please, please get these power-up orbs in the next game instead of the boring ass, like, UNSC button pressing circle power-ups. I can't stand these things in Halo 5 and Infinite and just looking at these orbs, I can't quite put into words how much cooler they are than just pressing a button, man. Like, look at them. They're so cool. Why are these things not in the game as usable power-ups? 
This map is also full of Easter eggs as well. There's a tribute room that has a TV with CE's OG menu on it, Halo Wars 2 posters, a framed picture from the Atriox car salesman trailer, an Xbox 360, an OG Xbox, and other stuff which is really cool. And then there's even an infection only Easter egg where if you smash a bunch of Oni ID badges on the floor, a door opens up with a drivable forklift with an operable lift with physics. I mean, man, this is the natural evolution of Reach's forklift and very cool touch. Very, very cool touch. I think with these Easter eggs, you can really tell that the designers on this map at Food War 3 had a ton of fun making them because they've really gone above and beyond and it doesn't feel forced. It feels very natural and fitting. So props to the designers. I really, really like Illusion. This is a great map and I hope some of its design philosophies are carried forward in future maps and future games because there's some stuff in this map that Halo has either not done for like 23 years or has never done at all. So fingers crossed those philosophies carry forward. Now, I am by no means a Forger, especially in Halo Infinite, but Forge has gotten a pretty big update with CU29, that does not roll off the tongue at all, and I've got to mention it. So the biggest thing here that I'm going to mainly focus on is the Covenant palette. V43 have added a ton of classic Covenant themed environment pieces that will undoubtedly be used in some god tier looking maps. I gotta say they look a little bit too like fat and bulbous, but I'm really happy that they went with a more classic Covenant aesthetic and not the distinctly different Halo 5 Covenant aesthetic. I, I really didn't like that and I love seeing this more like deep purple aesthetic come back. Forge got some other pretty big updates as well in regards to like game mode scripting and AI and other stuff like that, but frankly, I don't really know much about it. I just know that with how the Forge team operates, particularly with Infinite, these updates are probably really, really good updates. I mean, the Forge team, I, I don't think they've ever missed with this game, to be honest with you, and I doubt that this is the start of them missing, but sadly, I'm not a Forger, and Infinite's Forge, um, it, well, to put it frankly, it makes my smooth, ridgeless brain hurt quite a bit, so I'm not that clued into it. I just know that these updates are likely going to be really good and it's going to lead to even more amazing maps being created. So, with all that said, overall thoughts time. Um, now, if 343 hadn't started properly and officially talking about the fact that, yes, they are working on, again, not one, but multiple new Halo projects beyond Infinite, I'd be a lot more unhappy with this update than I actually am. Don't get me wrong, I actually don't think this update is very good, but I would be a lot more unhappy with it had they not started talking about that. The update is full of problems, uh, things that we've talked about so much in the past, but given that they are talking about what comes next, and given that that means that updates like this aren't the only thing on the horizon for years upon years upon years to come, I don't quite care as much about it because I know that we're going to be getting actual meaningful Halo content in the future and this isn't all we're getting. To summarize it very briefly, I think that Mark IV looks absolutely incredible, Illusion is great and the Forge updates are also really good, but considering that this is taking the place of Season 6 and it has only one new map, no new weapons, no new vehicles, no new equipment and no new game modes, I'm not about to sit here and say that this is a good update. Honestly, it just feels like a glorified shop update with a few little bits of content thrown in here and there to draw people back in, of which, I'm going to be honest, it has not really managed with me. I do think that this is what Infinite updates are going to be like from now on, and for those who still regularly play Infinite, it does suck, but for me personally, to be honest, I'm not that bothered because I don't really play Infinite that much anymore. I spend most of my time making videos, to be honest with you, and when I'm not making videos, I'm just playing Tarkov, and I can tell you for damn sure that updates like this are not going to be pulling me away from Tarkov, that's for sure. With Halo right now, my interest is, is fully focused on creating content, which I think I've really found a good groove with recently. I mean, videos have been performing insane recently, and I really feel like I'm back in my zone with it. I'm really happy and really excited with the content that I'm making, which is great. And also, I'm, I'm also fully focused on just what 343 and other studios are cooking up next beyond Infinite. Honestly, I'm actually 
quite excited to see how it goes, given that 343's studio composition is almost entirely different from top to bottom. I mean, the changes that 343 went through last year were almost as radical as the handover from Bungie to 343 initially. So I'm kind of excited and also very, mostly intrigued, but also pretty excited to see what happens with these changes. Of course, my hopes are not in the clouds. I'm not huffing hopium and you absolutely shouldn't either. I mean, we all know this, but 343 have a laundry list of failures behind them. And clearly this update has many of those failures being carried forward, but with new leadership, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm coping or huffing the hopium, but I'm willing to give the new leadership a bit of a benefit of the doubt and just see what happens. Because at the end of the day, it, 343 are essentially a completely new studio compared to the one that made uh, Infinite and Halo 5 and other stuff before that. It's, for all intents and purposes, it may as well not even be called 343 anymore. So yeah, I'm intrigued, uh, excited, but mostly intrigued. But yeah, as for Spirit of Fire or CU29, that incredibly memorable name, uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is a great update. Um, and it's kind of emblematic of the problems that Infinite has suffered from since day one, except now those problems don't come caveated with some kind of story update or story content or anything narrative at all, which, dude, could you imagine how good the story would have been for a Spirit of Fire update and we don't get them anymore? Oh man, it sucks. This is just one big shop, shop update to be honest with you. Um, the content that's there, the, I mean, Illusion is the only uh, actual like main new content. That and Forge, everything else is just cosmetic, but Illusion's great, Forge stuff is great. But besides that, it's, it's just a glorified shop update to be honest with you. Um, so leave your thoughts down below in the comments on CU29, the incredibly catchy and rolling off the tongue name of this update. What do you think? Are you playing Infinite again? Is this update going to make you start playing loads? Or are you kind of just like checked out until the next game? Um, just, you know, watching some lore content uh, and just waiting for the next game. Let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And uh, with that said, let's round this video out here. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. I promise I'm doing finger guns right now.